Okay, guys. So in the last session, what we understood was that this is the problem that we technically have. We have to find out the right movements from where we started the initial W I naught and W two naught in the particular simple structure that we drew in the first two sessions to reach to the peak. Okay, but the problem was that how do we do it when we have sixty million parameters? So in sixty million, sixty million dimension. you can't actually do this particular thing with a limited amount of computation you will be wasting a lot of time and you will need tons and tons of uh, processors just to process this simple uh, problem right so what exactly we do here that is the question so here i will use a little bit of maths you don't have to go in extreme details if you just know the terms i will tell you the intuitive meaning and that should be enough okay so what we have here as a problem let me draw it a little bigger let's say just these four circles should do so let's say this is the scenario if we are located here okay and this is w1 axis and this is w2 what i'm asking is if i'm at this particular point if i'm at this particular point will increasing w1 make sense or will decreasing it will along with uh, w2 increasing and w2 decreasing so what should i do should i increase or decrease w1 or should i increase or decrease w2 what exactly should i do and anywhere if you move you will actually do this so you are basically trying to find delta w that will optimize that will basically help you reach this peak okay maximize your performance okay so what we actually are doing is that we are trying to optimize this now we already know that our performance is measured let's say in this particular term okay this is our performance and what basically we want to do is we want to improve the performance with respect to one of these variables at a time okay because we don't know what will happen if i just move in one direction both of them will change right so what i actually will do is something called as partial differentiation okay so the partial derivative of performance with respect to w1 okay let's take w1 so what this particular thing mean is if i only change the w that is if i move in this particular direction the w2 will remain constant throughout this line okay so throughout this line w2 remains constant so if i move in this particular direction what is the change in performance is it positive is it negative what is it okay similarly partial derivative with w2 would give me the performance change if i move in w2 direction okay now the thing is we have to do this because there we have more than one variable with respect to which p is actually varying here okay now the thing is if you take w1 as let's say your x axis and w2 as your y axis this is basically the magnitude of change which i am having with movement in w1 so this is basically how much i have to move in the i direction this one plus this is how much i have to move in the j direction that is this one now let's take a few cases if performance is actually uh, let's say w1 so this is the direction if this is actually coming negative what that basically means is this direction your performance is reducing that is you have to move in this direction and it makes sense this is the target which i have i have to move in this direction so this value will come negative so let's say it comes my, uh, negative 3 negative 3i plus this uh, this value now this particular value that is your delta p upon delta w2 will come positive okay so let's take positive 5 positive 5j so what it basically says that minus 3i will be this and 5j will be this okay and if you actually use the vector rule what you will figure out is basically this is the direction resultant of these two this is the direction where in which this particular thing has to move so this is the direction in which this particle has to move so this particular thing gives me the delta w but the thing is we know that if we are climbing a particular mountain we have to take steps i mean i can't take a step i don't think uh, more than 50 cm not more than that but this is a computer it doesn't know what a step is so you have to define that particular size so whatever this particular thing is this is your direction okay you have to or let's say we have just normalized it with whatever the magnitudes are and we have to multiply it with an r this r is basically the rate 
Okay. Now this particular rate has to be very. Now this rate actually has a lot of issues with it, but uh, I'll try to show you that particular thing. So what happens is, let's say rate is or let's say the step size here is basically how long in this particular direction. Let's say these two have basically told you which direction you have to move, but how much is this much enough? Is this much enough? Or like I have to do this much. Let's say assume all of them are in the same direction. How much I have to do? Okay. Now let's you say that uh, because you don't know how far it is. That is the point. You don't know how far it is. So in that particular scenario, the best case is that you take a very small step. R is very small. The problem with that is if you take baby steps, what will be the problem if you take baby steps? You will need to take a lots of steps. And the problem with that is each of this step, even if you optimize in the direction, it's still a lot of steps and the computation will be too long. Okay. But if we take R is large, there's a very good chance because I don't know how far the particular uh, peak is. There's a very good chance that I might just jump at this particular point. I will miss the peak entirely. Okay. So that is one problem. So the R values are not, there's no fixed value of R, which will suit, but this is where we actually do a uh, little bit of tuning. Okay. So a uh, small value, small enough value, depending on the variance 0 0.1, 0 0.01, something like that will work. You, there's no perfect way of knowing what exactly the R value should be, but let's assume we have taken a small enough number and we move like this. And after let's say some X number of iterations, we reached the peak. Okay. The thing is that after each iteration, you will actually calculate this thing again. Okay. Because it's not necessary that the path is there in this direction itself. Maybe the direction changes. Uh, maybe this is one of your peaks. Okay. While climbing a mountain, this is one peak. So you might actually just stop here. So you actually have to consider other problems like looking, just take, taking a huge leap and see if this is higher than this or not. If you take a leap here, you will actually end up here. You know that this is the peak. But if you take a leap here, you will see that there's something bigger as well. This is a local maxima. So there are a lot of discussions in that direction, not entirely go into that. That is the uh, optimization side of the problem. But if we think about it very carefully, there's still one problem. Everybody would be happy about it except for the mathematicians. The problem here is what you are trying to calculate is, is your performance. The problem is, if you remember in the graph that we drew in our initial system, we had a function, what we had, the output basically, which told us our performance had a threshold function. So any movement here or here or here didn't change any output. Okay. Plus the output that we are having is not a continuous equation. So this, you have a step function here. It is not a differentiable function. It's, it's not even continuous. It's zero for all this. And then suddenly a one. So this entire thing is non-differentiable. So yes, this will work. But the problem is this is not a differentiable function. This particular thing, it's not possible to differentiate it. You have solved everything, but this particular variable cannot be calculated in its current form. What would be the solution? And the thing is, this particular problem that I just described is actually hill climbing problem. And this is a very, very popular problem. You will see it in machine learning, in artificial intelligence, in neural network, deep learning everywhere. But, and this is a very old mathematical problem. This is, not, this has nothing to do with uh, machine learning or any of these. This is an optimization problem. I'm just trying to maximize or minimize something, but this, and thus it's a very old problem. But its solution to this particular problem, when your function is a step function, didn't came till 74 from Stanford. Okay. So we will look at the next lecture. What exactly did we do to this that we were able to figure out this particular value? And that is a very, very interesting solution. It took a very long time for people to come up with it, but the solution was rather very simple.